Hello guys, welcome to my video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about systematic errors and random errors, okay? So we're going to first start off with um, systematic errors. So with errors, it is very important for you to know what are these errors, how do they affect measurements, and how do we look for them? What are their sources? What are some of the improvements that you can use in order to mitigate some of these errors? So errors generally are present whenever you're measuring physical quantities. And it is your responsibility as a physicist to be able to classify those errors and be able to understand them. So in this video and the videos that are to follow, I'm going to first start by explaining. The, I'm going to first start by explaining the concept of what are systematic errors, what are random errors. Then I'm going to move on to write um, different past papers. And explain to you in much depth as we'll be doing past papers together and again with those questions i highly recommend that you first work them out before you just look at the answers so that you really get a grasp of how the concepts actually work and i really hope that you can be able to understand how we arrive at the answer it's not just about writing the correct answer but it's also about understanding how we get to that answer so the first thing that we're going to start off with is systematic error so what exactly is a systematic error and how does it originate so basically a systematic error is a constant error okay it is a constant error um in all readings okay in all readings that you take okay that results okay so what does it do it results Okay, so it is an error that is constant in all readings and it results from measured values being above or below the true value. And it cannot be eliminated by averaging and it is just an error that is caused by the measuring instrument. What do I mean by this? Imagine you have a true value, right? Let's assume you have a certain true value that will be over here. And whenever systematic errors are present, your values are going to be either above or below the true value, but it's going to be constant throughout all the readings if all the readings are above the, the 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 actual true value they're all going to be above it meaning that you're going to experience values that will be something like this they are all above the true value and if they're also going to be below the true value they're all going to be below the true value what does it mean it means that you might have a micrometer screw gauge that has an error such that it reads a certain reading before you actually read the actual value what does it mean? It means that you're going to get inconsistent results and it's going to be constant throughout. It's always going to read more than what is actually the true value. So that's going to be consistent for every single measurement that you take using that micrometer screw gauge. It could be a meter root, it could be a veneer calipers. It's still going to be constant, right? That meter root or that veneer calipers is still going to cause a deviation in one direction that is going to be constant. And unlike random errors, systematic errors cannot be eliminated by averaging. It doesn't matter how much you average, you're still above the true value, right? So no matter how much you average, you're never going to get down to the actual true value um, itself. So what does it look like graphically? Graphically, it's going to look something like this. Okay, so basically, if we were to plot a graph of systematic errors, it's going to be basically something like this, right? And what's going to happen is, if this is going to be your original graph, right? Let's just say this is your original graph, okay? We can either have an overestimation that all your values translate upwards, right? So this is going to be an overestimation that all your values are slightly above the original graph or above the true value, okay? Or we can have an underestimation. So this is this is an underestimation, right? This is an underestimation. So those are the two kinds of estimations that exist with systematic errors. They can either be in overestimation or an underestimation and overestimation meaning that you are saying that your reading are much more so all your graph translates upwards it no longer passes through the origin it's no longer the same as original graph and it's going to be consistent throughout or it's a graph that's just below and every single thing is just going to be an underestimation how do we what are some of the examples that exist right so another thing that we have to consider is the examples right uh that exists of systematic errors one of the things that come to my mind is going to be the famous one which is the zero error what is a zero error it means that an instrument has a reading right it means that as a reading even right even when there is nothing measured okay there is nothing 
um, measured. You have measured nothing, but your instrument is actually saying that there is actually a reading that is present on that instrument. And number two, it can, okay, it can be positive, right? It can be positive or negative, right? Just depending, uh, depending on the direction, okay? So with zero errors, one of the special things is that there's always a reading. Even if you haven't measured anything, there's just always going to be that little reading that we're showing up on that um, on that instrument. And it can be positive or negative. It just depends on the direction that you're going to be uh, measuring, looking towards. I give an example. For example, you want to measure the mass of an individual. Now, before you start measuring, the scale already has a reading saying two kilograms, right? It means that if a person weighs 40 kilograms and they stand on that on, on that um, mass or on, on the balance is going to register 42 kilograms, but they just weigh or they, they just weigh 40 kilograms, right? But because there's an extra two kilograms, they're going to weigh, um, you know, they're going to weigh 42 kilograms or it's a micrometer screw gauge. Before you have measured, it was already at the negative. It's saying negative 0 0.1, meaning the reading that you're going to get, if you're supposed to get four centimeters, you're now going to get less. You're now going to get four point, um, I don't know, 4.0 instead of saying 4.1. So it's already less than the true value. And it's going to be constant for all measurements that you're going to take. So because the zero error is always there before you've taken a measurement, it's always going to be constant throughout. And then the other error that is going to, uh, that is going to be there is an error that is uh, known as wrong calibration. Okay, wrong calibration. What does this mean? It means that um, a meter rule might be starting at a one or a zero, or maybe it's zero, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? There's some error that is going on on that meter rule. So because of wrong calibration, it means that the readings that are there are always going to be a lie, right? You're going to think that it's five centimeters, but it's really not five centimeters. It's like 10, 15 centimeters because maybe the rule is expanded. It's wrongly calibrated because it's much more wider than it's going to be. So there are a lot of causes of wrong calibration and it's a very, um, very, very uh, big cause. So how do we stop these? How do we, um, how do we improve this? So one of the things that we really have to talk about goes on to the improvements. How do we improve uh, zero errors the first one right you better check okay you better check and correct right and correct um the zero error right so you have to really check and correct that zero error for example we go back to our mass if your mass is saying two kilograms but you know that this person weighs 40 kilograms your mass tells you it's 42 just subtract right so we know that by using this we know that the actual right the actual is going to be your reading right your reading minus your zero error Right, it doesn't matter if your zero error is negative, right? Just put it, it can either be a positive uh, zero error or it can be a negative zero error. It doesn't matter, just put your zero error there automatically. The um, that formula accounts for everything. The main thing that you're saying, actual reading minus the zero error, you're always going to get the actual reading. So even if your zero error is a negative. Right? It's going to be in the negative direction. Just say negative, negative. It becomes a positive and you add up the reading. Or it's a positive. It becomes a negative a reading minus that. And then you always get the smaller value. So don't really worry about this. I'm going to discuss again this in depth when I'll be talking about um, systematic errors, when I'll be actually solving past papers and more questions so that you can really be able to understand how this works. But as for now, I really want you to understand the value of um, appreciating what systematic uh, systematic errors are. But these are errors that are constant throughout all the readings that you make. The graph can either be an overestimation or an underestimation where everything's translated upwards. Some of the examples can be zero error, wrong calibration. And we can basically improve by checking and correcting the zero error. Or the second thing that we can do is just recalibrate the instrument, right? Just recalibrate and get everything back on track. Just recalibrate the instrument that is giving you the wrong error. Those are some of the things that you can do to solve uh, systematic errors. What, what else do we have? We have random errors. Okay, we have random errors. So it's very important for you to know what exactly are random errors, what causes them, and what really can we do, uh, can we do about them? So these results, okay, so these results in readings, okay, being scattered. So all the readings now in this case are just being scattered. Okay, they're being scattered, but now it's around, okay, around the true value, right, around the true value, and it's now equally, 
so it's uh it's both right so it's they're both greater okay or larger um right greater or larger or smaller than the true value what causes them right number one what causes them they can be caused by human errors right there are a lot of things that really causes these errors so some of them are actually uh human errors that really result in these things and they um it's very important for us to identify this kind of error so random errors are pretty different from systematic errors in a way that these are readings that are scattered around the true value they can be both greater larger or just smaller than the true value so there's an equal chance of us having very big values or having very small values so it's really precision that is the cause of random errors because it's not really precise but with systematic errors they really affect the accuracy of all your measurements right so very important for you to understand that with random errors they're just causing readings to scatter about the true value again we use our same example if we have a true value that is over there the readings are going to be you know some are here some are there some are there right if they are the other color some will be here some will be there some they're just scattered about so they're not really um you know they're not really consistent in their occurrence right and what are some of the sources of these errors and how can we be able um to improve them so the sources that we have right they're pre uh they're pretty set forward some of the sources that we have number one is going to be a uh, parallax error right it's going to be parallax error what is a parallax error well this is basically an error due to wrong eye placement so what what happens is let's assume you want to measure using a ruler but you don't really know specifically the angle to look at it from you look above you look below or you don't really look at the meter in line your eyesight is not in line with that meter you're going to encounter what you call a parallax error you're not going to get the true value just because you're not placed the right way with the instrument and this is a very 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 common error that really affects how readings can be made so it's very important for you to be able to avoid this error so that you can really be able to um to improve on that the other errors that we have with a lot of errors some of the errors that we have are environmental fluctuations right so this could be fluctuations in environmental conditions right fluctuations um in environmental conditions okay in environmental um conditions so some of the errors right it could be it depends it could be temperature it could be humidity it could be wind there are a lot of factors that can really cause fluctuations in those environmental conditions and that can really affect thus and really cause errors whenever you be making um your measurements so it's very important for you for us to look out for these errors how can we improve again that's the whole point of these things always asking ourselves how can we be better how can we improve these errors quite simple the improvements are actually right the improvements actually take multiple readings okay so you're going to take multiple readings right and what are you going to do with those readings are you going to you know eat them up no 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 no. you're going to take those multiple readings and you're going to find the average right very important you're going to find the average right so that's something that you can do or sometimes you just plot a graph right or you can just plot a graph and you can really eliminate those errors find so since some are negative some are positive find an average and that will really improve eliminating those errors. So whenever you've been asked, measure a certain table, its length and its width, do it four times, do it five times, I don't know. But three times is sort of like the sweet spot. If you do it three times, then you find the average of those three values, you get the accurate um, value. If I ask me the, the diameter of a ball using a micrometer screw gauge, it will really be highly encouraged for you to measure it three times from different angles again, then find the average of all those readings. So some of the improvements that you can use, you can also use for things like parallax error if you initially have good eye placement right good eye placement make sure that your eye eyesight is parallel to the meter that you're trying to be using right another thing that you can do is actually use of maybe some draft shields right some draft shields to eliminate right to block um to block some air currents right to block some air currents or you just look you just want to minimize heat losses or you just want to minimize um heat losses so you'd highly recommend that you be able to use um draft shields some of the things that you can use is use of mirrors okay so we also have um use of mirrors right and these mirrors are going to be adjacent right use of mirrors that are adjacent to scale 
right to scale on an analog uh analog meter right so some analog meters like our meters voltmeters actually consist of these mirrors that you can really utilize as an experimenter to get an accurate value of those uh, particular thing and again a student may reduce this uh you know and be able to uh to do those things again some of the things that you can actually do is for example if you have a wire that is varying diameters along its length what you can do is you have a micrometer screw gauge and you can take um readings along the wire at different points that really helps reduce the errors you can also let's say you've been given a non-circular cross-section of a wire what can you do it's not really cross-sectional just take readings spirally around the wire at different positions and you'll be able to get that damn that cross-section right so those are some of the errors that can come up and the graph basically how we can be able to represent um systematic errors how i think about this is they're usually like this this is going to be your graph right basically something like this so this is going to be your original graph okay and how is it going to look like points are going to scatter because of systematic errors points are going to scatter they're just going to be like this okay some on the line some on the line but points are basically going to scatter so this is the effect right this is the y-axis this is the x-axis this is the effect right of random errors okay this is the effect of random errors why because points scatter because points scatter okay about um the original graph about the original graph so that's basically how we can identify and check for the presence of um of random errors so guys a, a key summary we've talked about systematic errors we've talked about random errors we talked about systematic errors these are constant errors in all the readings that you're going to take because they can either be below or above the true value we've talked of how they cannot be eliminated by averaging and how they are constant and they're caused by the measuring instrument and we've discussed about the graphs some examples zero errors wrong calibration and how we can be able to improve them and therefore random errors really talked about how they are caused by scattering of values above the true value they can both be greater or smaller than the true value and they're caused by human errors they just cut around right and they're Cause sources are parallax error, fluctuations, environmental conditions, reaction time, a lot of different errors that really cause random errors. And something that you can do to improve is take multiple readings and then find the average and or plot a graph, right? Something like that. And for parallax error, you can really have good eye placement or use draft shields for some fluctuations in environmental conditions. This can be temperature, rainfall, wind, a lot of things. You're also going to want to use some mirrors adjusting to scales on analog meters. And these are some of the effects that you can see of random errors on a graph i hope this is really helpful for you and again check my questions the questions that i've solved on systematic errors and random errors check them out in my videos um after this particular video or um watch them out in my in my playlist for physical quantities and units i hope this was really helpful thank you guys for watching i'll see you in the next one